Let's imagine the following situation. Let's say you have an application running and you also have monitoring set up. It means you can see whatever is happening within your application, which is great because you suddenly notice that your application is throwing a lot of errors, a lot of 500s. So you decide to dig a little bit deeper. You notice that user A makes a lot of requests during a certain period of time and user B makes them too, but the requests for user B start failing for some reason. Now you also notice that user B makes them slightly later than user A. So what is actually happening here? Some requests for user B are passing, but some of them are actually failing. Well, this is something that could happen whenever you have the problem called noisy neighbor problem. The user B has a noisy neighbor, aka user A, and this is why the resources of your application are all used by user A, so user B has nothing left to be able to serve by your application. All right, this is better illustrated within this diagram. Let's say we have tenant A and tenant B, and by the way, tenant is actually interchangeable with the word user in this case, because in cloud computing, if we have a machine that our application is running on, so let's say this is our machine, this application will have multiple tenants. This is better illustrated on in, in this graph that I found on the internet. So in a multi-tenant environment, you would have your hardware, a hypervisor, and you have, we would have multiple virtual machines spun up on top of them. So every virtual machine would be used by different customer. Imagine AWS or imagine any other cloud provider such as Google Cloud, where users can spin up their instances and they will be running on top of the hardware that Google or Amazon owns. And this will be a multi-tenant environment versus a single tenant where all of the virtual machines are actually used by a single customer. All right, so let's go back to our blackboard. And here we'll see that we have two graphs. The first one belongs to tenant A, where we have some other peak usage times. Let's say these are actually the working times of the company and they are almost hitting the resource limits. Okay, this dashed line are our resource limits. And we also have tenant B. And as soon as they come closer to the resource limits, we start throwing a lot of errors. So these are exactly the same errors that we that the user B is facing. Okay. So this is not good. And this is called a noisy neighbors problem, or it can also be an anti-pattern if you set up your environment in the wrong way. So let's talk about the remedies or how to avoid this. And by the way, before we do that, I also want to mention that this is not only happening with two tenants or two users. This can happen with multiple tenants. In this case, we have three tenants, tenant A, B and C. And if you look at their usage, they're actually quite average. So they're not even hitting our resource limits. But if you sum them up, you will see that the total usage is going above our resource limits of the whole machine. So if you remember this graph, let's say three of the customers are already hitting our resource limits, our hardware limits. So what do we do in this case? But guys, before we jump into the solution space, I want to give a quick shout out to Eraser.io because I really love this tool. It's very flexible. We can have a lot of figures, diagrams and so on. It even has AI features that can build a diagrams from, from simply words that you put in. So go check it out. I'm pretty sure you're going to like it too. And as I said, it's very flexible for different kind of use cases, such as tutorials like this, or simply explaining something to your colleagues at work. Anyway, let's start with the solutions. So first of all, you might think, why not simply do auto scaling instances? And yes, you would be right. Actually, auto scaling is the primary solution that everyone would recommend. But there's one issue with auto scaling, namely this trigger window. Okay, so whenever you try to auto scale, you realize that you hit the resource limits. And now you need to spin up more pods, more containers or whatever. And while you're auto scaling here, there's a little window while the machines are being spun up. Okay, well, there are some more techniques. And if you watch my system design and architecture playlist, you will know how to do this better. But usually you have this trigger window, which is unwanted if your application must be very, very performant. And there are use cases like some mission critical applications that do not want this trigger window. But most of, for most of the use cases, this is fine. If this is not fine for you, then there are more solutions. First of all, throttling. Throttling can be on different levels. It can be on a pod level configured in Kubernetes. It can be on an application level. It can also be on an API level. So 
For example, if you're using an API gateway from Amazon or uh, from rather AWS, you can have root route level throttling by simply adding throttling uh, limit and so on. You can also do something different. So first of all, what is throttling? Meaning if user B in this case reaches the limits or goes above the limits or whoever goes above the, the limits is going to have the calls rejected. And of course, this is not ideal. So there is something that we need to take care of, namely, uh, don't forget to set up proper retry mechanisms in clients. So the clients should be able to retry the same call if it failed before. And I already have a video going deep into retry mechanisms. So I will link it in the description or you can find it in the info box on the top right. So the next point is load leveling with a queue, meaning if you have an application and these are basically the users or they can also be some third party services from other companies, from our customers. They're trying to reach our application. So in this case, they wouldn't reach them our application directly, but they would rather put their requests into a queue. And then queue would basically send these requests to our application one by one. So not in a chaotic manner, but one by one. So by this, we could at least level out some load. The next point would be simply restricting some specific operations. Let's say our application is almost running out of the resources. The CPU usage is 95% or something. It's, <laughs> let's say, about to die. We could literally restrict some of the operations. Let's say you can no longer search within our application because it would be too much too resource consuming. This is just an example, but you get the idea. The next point is actually applying quality of system classes. This would probably be the best solution, in my opinion, because it kind of comes out of the box if you're using something, some orchestrator like Kubernetes. Within Kubernetes, if we look at their docs, they have different cloud of service classes that can be assigned to a pod, guaranteed, burstable, and best effort. And let's look at the guaranteed, for example, to get the idea. So pods that are guaranteed have the strictest resource limits and are less least likely to face eviction. They are guaranteed not to be killed until they exceed their limits. So basically, the, nothing is going to happen with this pod. It's not going to be turned off or throttled unless um, the limits are hit. And this is going from up to uh, below, meaning best effort can use up whatever is left on the machine. So you get the idea. And I will leave the link in the description. So if you want to dig, dig a bit deeper, you can do this. And of course, the last point is background operation, meaning you can think about which operations in your application are can actually run in the background. And if you if you already have background operations, simply move them to off peak times, let's say you have a cron job that's running to clean up um, dead users, dead users, meaning users that are no longer needed in your system for one or other reasons. Maybe they have been detected as fraudulent. So you can do this cleanup uh, during the off peak time instead of doing this during the day. So you would basically move these operations behind during the off peak times. And this is how you would avoid the noisy neighbors. All right, guys, if you have more questions, please put them in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.